this is going to be a review of the In Motion Challenger, the V13. I'm gonna ride it on nice smooth streets, bumpy streets, do an acceleration test, go for a night ride, talk about the convenience factor and amenities. Finally, at the end, I'm gonna go through my conclusion, so stay tuned. All right, let's take a closer look at this thing and see what this thing's all about. InMotion has just released the Challenger, which is probably the most anticipated wheel of the year. There's never been a wheel that's as fast, heavy, pricey, or as over-engineered as this one. The 22-inch tire powered by a 4,500 watt motor and 3,000 watt hour battery can take you to riding speeds of up to 90 kilometers an hour and ranges of up to 150 kilometers. There's also air suspension with 90 millimeters of travel to help soften the ride. I'm really happy to see that InMotion now has studded pedals that are more comfortable and grippy. Running along the back, it has an integrated flexible mudguard connected to the roll cage, a brake light, a spin kill button, and just below, dual charging ports. Along the top is where you'll find the trolley handle and display. Now underneath the hood is where they really over-engineered everything from fire safety to cutout prevention, which I'll get into more later. I'd like to give you a huge thanks to my sponsors, InMotion, E-Wheels, and Speedy Feet for supporting this video. Everything about this thing seems like a pretty heavy build, and that's probably why it weighs so damn much. Let's go out and test it out. This is my favorite place to be riding around. It is very smooth, very fun to ride, very good place to go excessively fast. Thing is nice. I can feel the inertia of the tire, especially once I hit like 50 kilometers an hour. Once above that, you can really have to apply more force to the side. You're gonna be giving your knee some lateral force. Ah, uh, I'm scared. Yeah, I'm technically not allowed to ride on this thing, but where there's less people, the security guards seem to care less. So we're gonna be riding here today. All right, let's talk about the general handling of this thing. When I'm taking slower turns, I expected this thing to be very clunky, but I find it it's pretty smooth. It's not the quickest, most nimble wheel that I've ridden, but it is decent at the slow speeds. As with all the suspension wheels, the pedals are up high, so it's really hard to get the pedals to scrape. You can do track stands, it's just a little heavy. As long as you're doing precise movements, it's a lot of weight to throw. The ergonomics of this thing are pretty good. Compared to the Abrams, this 22 inch wheel feels very different between my legs. It is skinnier and my knees don't bash into the top of the frame. One of the things I don't really like is that it's kind of tapered by adding some pads near the top find that the contact points are pretty damn ideal. Let's try sitting on this thing. All right, it's time to do an acceleration test. Back to the old stomping ground. We'll see how fast I can get up to uh, 80, maybe 90. Don't really want to die. Let's see what this thing can do. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Woo! This thing is powerful. Man, this thing feels so stable when I'm accelerating. I'm allowed to throw my entire body weight 
I just hit uh, 85 kilometers an hour, peak power of 10,000 watts. It hasn't given me any hiccups or the motor control feeling choppy, just feels reliable. this thing definitely requires more force. I think the acceleration might be the best. There's a little latency problem with the display. It's a little bit slow. It's not gonna be entirely accurate, but it's the best we can do. I don't know what the time is, but I imagine that was fast. Three, two, one, go! go. Now this is the wheel with suspension. I also have the wheel without suspension. In the last video of mine with the master, I did an acceleration test and people said you should take out the suspension and see if you can accelerate faster. Well, here we are. These are actually the same model. The only difference is the suspension has been taken out and replaced with like steel rods. Without further ado, let's do an acceleration test on the non-suspension wheel. You know, I'm not really feeling the difference between the suspension and the non-suspension wheel in terms of acceleration. It's a little more awkward for me to turn and weave. All right. I don't know if this is actually gonna be faster, but we'll see. Will the uh, computer results be the judge? Three, two, one, go! I'm not gonna go into too much detail about uh, the non-suspension wheels just because I don't prefer it. I just wanted to see if it could accelerate faster. Three, two, one, go! The suspension feels good. I wanna use it, let's go. relatively smooth roads, you can feel that suspension working. The suspension does a good enough job, the big tire does a good enough job, everything about this thing allows me to ride excessively fast. This thing feels so good going at high speeds on the road. Definitely never had a wheel that I could ride so fast with. There is some inertia to battle. The inertia isn't quite as bad as say the Abrams or the Monster Pro. Now to do these high speed turns, I really need to shift my weight in. I need to bend my leg, I drop my body weight down, and I lean in. If I do that, I can do these turns really fast. Yeah, like that. You can get a lot of range if you ride slowly, but if I'm going full speed, 
the battery's dying at 60 kilometers. So even at like 35% battery life, this thing still has a lot of juice and can go pretty fucking fast. How fast can it go? 70. 78. Okay, now it's tilted on me. That is still in the fun zone. When the wheel wants to slow you down, it makes a beep and the pedals start tilting. But you can't really hear the beeping. All right, let me find a nice place and we'll talk about the convenience factor and the amenities. The tourists. All right, let's talk about the amenities and the convenience factor of the V13. First, let me get rid of these pads and then we'll get into the details. These pads are uh, custom made by me, so that's why they're so ugly, but they're functional and custom fitted to me. You can buy third party ones or use the ones that are included with this wheel. Convenience factor of this wheel. Picking it up is probably the thing you want to avoid doing the most. It is absolutely Horrendous. If you're gonna use the spin kill button, you have to kind of use an awkward hand position. You have to bend your arms. It's 115 pounds. This is not ideal. If you do have to pick it up, I would just turn this thing off and grab underneath these bars underneath where you can lift it up a little bit higher, keep your arms straight so your knees aren't bashing against the thing. But um, still, it's very heavy. Luckily, this thing has a 22 inch tire which makes rolling it up the stairs a possibility. So let me show you what I mean. Yeah, that is easy. So as long as you have stairs that you don't mind possibly damaging, then I would just push it up the stairs. When it comes to the trolley handle, the trolley handle is pretty good. Simple one-handed operation where you're just All right, so that's it for the trolley handle and picking it up kind of thing. But now let's talk about the kickstand. Now this thing doesn't actually have an official kickstand, but I find that you can actually put it onto its front and it is pretty stable in this position. Now moving on to the back, we have a mud guard, which does a pretty good job. I really like that it's very flexible. I'm not concerned about breaking it. I'm not concerned about bashing it onto a curb and having it buck me forward. So InMotion has finally caught up with the game and has studded pedals now, which are much more grippy than grip tape. They're comfortable, and they're held up by friction. All right, so now let's talk about the suspension. The suspension is adjustable. There's a little thing right here, and you can uh, use this little tool they use to adjust the suspension damper. Basically, you turn it to the right, it becomes less bouncy, and you turn it to the left, it becomes more bouncy. You can, well, you can adjust it and play with it however you like. Also, when you go to the top, there's a display. The display gives you more details about your ride. And the home screen is semi-customizable where you can configure two of the readouts. I'm just gonna pick the average speed for this one and maximum power for the other one. Now you can also configure the way this thing rides in the settings. You can set a bunch of things like max speed, pedal sensitivity, and a bunch of other things. Now one of my biggest concerns with these wheels is battery safety and uh, fire safety in general. Not only do these batteries have communication and temperature sensors, they're potted in some sort of material. I don't know, what, what do they say? It's ABS PC V0 grade fireproofing timbering. And it's waterproof, you can submerge these batteries. The electronics inside are not only enclosed in a second enclosure, they double the MOSFET transistors which can dissipate more energy faster. The wires that run from the motor to the electronics are eight gauge. Those wires are less likely to overheat. Now this is getting a little technical. There are some hull sensors which basically tell the position of the motor. This wheel has two sets of those, so if one of those fails, there's at least another set to prevent it from cutting out. And that's what happened with the veteran Abrams. That's been notorious for cutouts. It's the hull sensor problem. Overall, this wheel has, is the most overkill and has the largest safety margins of any wheel that I've ever seen. And it's built like a tank, so it's probably gonna be able to handle a crash. Let me put the pads back on. This is an old amusement park for like some sort of kung fu movie. 
Apparently, this movie set has some sort of cultural significance, of which I don't understand. I just see it as a great place to ride. <laughs> There's so many stairs in this place. All right, let's do more stairs. Amusement park is awesome. Overall feeling of this thing is pretty damn good. I can even go upstairs, which is uh, something that I normally don't do. The only issue I have is the suspension kind of bottoms out sometimes if I smash the ground really hard. Let's go back and recharge this wheel and go for a night ride. So, in conclusion, the InMotion V13 is an absolute fucking beast. This wheel is designed for speed. When you're cruising really fast, this thing is really, really comfortable. This wheel is capable of going so much faster. It has a free spin of 140 kilometers. That is significantly faster than any other wheel on the market right now. Now, 
they limit the speed to 90 kilometers an hour for safety reasons. And I say like, if it's above 70, I'm in the fun zone. And if it's below 70, I'm in like the not fun zone. And this wheel gives me like 50 kilometers in the fun zone. When you're riding this thing at speed, expect ranges of maybe like 60 kilometers. But if you're cruising casually, you probably eke out 150 kilometers out of this thing. Now, when you're taking high-speed turns, there is a bit of inertia. I kind of really need to lean in, kind of drop my body weight, but at least I can do it, and I can do it pretty stably. I would like to also mention that this wheel is probably not for beginners, and it requires a fair bit of effort to control this thing. This wheel is kind of heavy. When you want to accelerate, when you want to turn, everything requires a little bit more effort. It's kind of like driving a car without power steering. The motor runs as smooth as butter. It is powerful and smooth. I can really accelerate and I can brake with no lack of confidence in its ability. As for off-roading with this thing, it is comfortable to go on bumpy dirt roads fast and cobblestones fast. You know, all of that shit fast. But if you're doing technical off-roading where you need to like weave through rocks and stuff like that, it's gonna be kind of difficult because this thing is big and heavy and it's not a surprise to me that I find it very challenging. The suspension works pretty well as long as you're within the, the range of which it works. But if you're doing like one meter drops and want to ride on pretty smooth streets, then you might need to adjust the pressure, but you just need to find your balance there. Generally speaking, when you're talking about speed, it's inversely correlated with convenience. And this wheel is extremely fast. Really, if you have to carry this thing, I would not get this wheel. This, this wheel is gonna be absolutely miserable to carry upstairs, but if you're in a situation where you can push it up the stairs, then it's much more doable. The trolley handle isn't bad. The pedals are great, they're grippy, comfortable. Nothing bad to say about that. I know we don't talk about headlights, but I do like this headlight just like I like the V11 headlight. It's bright and it's focused. One of the things I wanna mention and I, I wanna applaud in motion for doing is increasing their safety. That is something that I think all the manufacturers should be doing right now. This wheel has more safety built into it than any other wheel I've ever seen. Fire safety is probably my biggest concern and I appreciate that they have potted their batteries so they're waterproof and they have temperature sensors, they communicate with the motherboard, so these batteries sound pretty safe to me. The other fear of mine is cutouts. First, the motor goes way faster than it needs to. It has more power in reserve. The idea that a wheel that goes slower is safer is not correct. You always want to have more power in reserve. So that way, if you need that power, it's there. Another reason why it might cut out is because of water damage and there's more water protection. Another reason it might cut out is because the wires overheat and this one has eight gauge wiring. The more dangerous these are, whether it's fire safety or cutouts, the more regulations we're gonna face. And rather than operating inside this gray zone where it's not really illegal or legal, there's just gonna be black and white. I almost forgot, this video is sponsored by InMotion, E-Wheels, and Speedy Feet. So if you wanna support them, you can order this wheel along with other wheels and I'll leave links down below. Ready? I'll be careful. Just makes me want to go outside. <laughs>